Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered ChumbaCasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. It's new. It's amazing. It's Prell. P-R-E-L-L Prell Shampoo. Yes, Procter & Gamble's new Radiant Cream Shampoo in the handy tube. Prell brings you the life of Riley. Prell, the shampoo that removes unsightly dandruff in as little as three minutes, leaves hair more radiantly clean, radiantly lovely, presents The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. <laughs> Chester A. Riley has been happily married now for 18 long years. And yet, on one night of each week, Riley tears off the bonds of matrimony and becomes a gay, romantic Lothario, the darling of beautiful women. On that magic night, Riley might be a boyish Van Johnson, a suave, sophisticated Walter Pigeon, or a dashing Errol Flynn. It all depends on the particular motion picture Riley and Peg happen to see on their weekly visit to the movie. Tonight, our hero emerged from the Bijou Theater, transformed if only in his own mind, into James Mason. At the moment, Peg Riley and uh, James Mason are sipping their usual after-theater soda. Riley, are you through with that soda yet? Quite. Then pay the check and let's go home. Right. Oh, I wish we had a car instead of walking. These shoes are killing me. Tight. <laughs> what are you mumbling about? Don't try to talk with your mouth full. There's nothing in my mouth, Peg. Don't, don't you get it? Get what? Uh, that, that movie tonight. Well, what about it? Well, look at me. Uh, notice the bushy eyebrows, the hair hanging over my forehead? Look at the shape of my ears and my shining white teeth. What uh, movie star do I remind you of? Lassie. <laughs> now, cut it out, Peg. You know very well Lassie's a girl. Be serious. What star do I look like? A human being. Mm, William Bendix. Now, wait a minute. You don't have to insult me. <laughs> All right, I give up. Who do you look like? James Mason. James Mason? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, you think it's funny. Well, if I cracked you over the knuckles with a cane, you wouldn't think it was funny. <laughs> oh, Riley, if you're James Mason, then I'm Jane Russell. Well. Don't say that I'm a dead ringer for him. It's just that he's got a certain air about him, and I've got an air about me. Yeah, you sure have. You better stop using that new shaving lotion. It's horrible. In the movie, we were the only two people in a whole empty row, and they were standing six deep in the back. I ain't talking about that kind of an air. I'm in a kind of a romantic Savoy fairy. You may not have noticed it, but... Uh... But other women, too. Uh, look at that woman over there staring at me. And, and she's with some man. Hey, Peg, that's Hobart Morris and his wife. Hi there. Riley, why are you waving at him? We hardly know him. What are you talking about, Peg? Our junior and their Marilyn are practically going steady. Oh, they're coming over. They're bringing their sodas with them. Oh, oh hello there, Riley. Oh, hi, Martha. Riley, Martha. Martha. Riley. Well, what are you folks doing here? Uh, oh, we just dropped in for a soda after the movie. Yeah. Uh. Oh, did you see James Mason, too? Yes, I just love him. He's charming. Quite. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Don't I remind you of uh, anybody, Mrs. Morris? Remind me? Right. Somebody you uh, saw in the movie tonight. Uh, look at me. Oh, Riley. But look at the eyebrows, the shape of my ears, the teeth. Well, uh, who do I remind you of? Somebody you saw tonight. 
Oh, of course. That wrestler, Gorgeous George. <laughs> Not in the newsreel. Oh. You mean James Mason? You see, Peg, she noticed right away. Oh, Riley, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> he, he gets this way after every movie. <laughs> Riley, if you're James Mason, then I'm Jane Russell. <laughs> well, well, I don't see what's so funny. Don't you mind them, Mr. Riley. I think you're like James Mason. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Morris. Oh, don't be so formal, James. <laughs> Call me Adelaide. All right. Oh. I can't figure what you women see in this James Mason and the dialogue they give him. Did you ever hear a man call a woman my heart's delight? <laughs> Heart's Delight. Sounds like an ice cream sundae. Oh. Hey, here it is, right on the menu. Thirty-five cents. <laughs> well, you just ain't the romantic pipe, Morris. Women go for pet names. You know what I used to call Peg before we were married, or when we were in love? Oh, Riley, for heaven's sake. Oh, I ain't ashamed. I had a special name for her. Peachy Pie. <laughs> well, what do you know? That's on the menu, too. Twenty-five cents. Oh. Well, I think it's very charming. I wouldn't mind being called Peachy Pie. Well, I, I think we... I be... think we all better go home. Oh, yes, it's, it's late. Uh, can we drop you off, folks? Oh, swell. Yes. Oh, uh, you girls wait here. We'll get the car and pick you up. Okay. It's over on the lot. Come on, Riley. Yeah, okay. We... Uh, Riley, yeah. the check. Oh, no, 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 no. Here, let me pick it up. No, 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 I'll pick it up. No, Riley, I insist on paying. Oh, okay, I'll meet you halfway. I'll pick it up and you pay it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it's a nice little car you have here, Morris. Yeah, she runs fine. I've had her a long time, but she stood up pretty well. Yeah, she runs swell. Yeah, but I'm getting a new Nash any day now. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about buying a used car, but you know those used car dealers. Yeah, right? true. In business, it's always better to know the man you're dealing with. If you deal with a stranger, and you might possibly run into a crook. Yeah. Now, if I could buy from a crook that I knew, <laughs> would you like to sell this car? Well, I, <clears throat> I might. You see, uh, my wife wants two cars, and when I get the new one, I might talk her out of it. Yes, I'll give you a call. Oh, it's well. Say yes, Morris. But don't say anything to my wife. If I buy this, I want to surprise her. Oh, no, not a word. Oh, good. Well, well, hop in, lady. You sit in the front, Mrs. Riley. It's warmer. Oh, no, I... Go well, ahead. Just... I'll sit in the back here with James Mason. Right. <laughs> Tadio, toodaloo, pip-pip, and top hole. <laughs> <laughs> Peg, I, I oh, don't know. honest, Riley, how could you make such a spectacle of yourself? Oh, Peg, what did I do? I... James Mason. And fluttering your eyelashes at Mrs. Morris. Why, Peg, you're jealous. Jealous? <laughs> Me? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I'm embarrassed. No, you're, you're, you're jealous, just like Morris was. <laughs> oh, now you got Mr. Morris jealous. Well, sure, didn't you notice? He, he couldn't hide it. Couldn't stand his wife looking at a younger man. <laughs> a younger man? <laughs> You're at least three years older than Mr. Morris. Well, yeah, but he aged quicker. I, <laughs> I stayed young for years. Happens all the time. What you call a case of arrested development. You see, physically I'm older, but mentally... Mentally you're still in diapers. <laughs> now, Peg, let's not fight, right? I'm not fighting. I'm just annoyed. Naturally, but is it my fault I'm so attractive to women? Well, of course. But don't you worry, honey. I've only got eyes for you, so cheer up. You're stuck with me for life. <laughs> Fine way to cheer me up. Oh, come on. Give me a kiss, peachy pie. Oh, I give up. Atta girl. Remember, though, next time you come out of the movies, be yourself. Okay, okay, I promise. How about that kiss? Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, Peg. How does it feel to be kissed by James Mason? <laughs> oh, hi, Junior. Hello, Pop. What's the matter? You having trouble with your homework? I'm not doing homework. I gotta write a letter to Marilyn Morris. Oh, 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 oh romance. No, I, I don't want to write this mush, but there's this other fellow after Marilyn too, and he writes her these mushy notes, so she makes me do it too. Gee, Pop, what goes on in a woman's mind anyway? Well, don't worry, son. You're young yet. You'll find out about women when you get married. 
I will? Yeah, sure. Of course, by then it'll be too late. <laughs> I can't write this dopey letter. Well, what about this other kid? Ah, uh, he can have Marilyn. Uh, Junior. Junior, I'm surprised at you. What are you, a quitter? I never acted like that. When me and Sidney Monaghan were both after your mother, where would I be today if I'd have said, oh, let him have her? As far as that goes, where would you be? <laughs> now, now, sit down and write that letter. I don't know what to say. I'll help you. I'm an expert on this kind of thing. Uh, what's this uh, other kid like? Oh, he's a real jupe. He's got a lot of dough. He's older than me and thinks uh-huh, he can... Uh-huh. Got the angle. Start writing. Okay. Dear Marilyn... No, 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 no. Start off like this. Dearest Peachy Pie. Oh, oh no, Pop. Why? What's wrong? Well, a girl had to be a moron to fall for a line like that. <laughs> sure. How dare you? You're talking about the woman I love. All right. Huh? Well, go on, right. Believe me, Junior, this is the way to start a love letter. Oh, okay. Uh, Dearest Peachy Pie. Uh, I'll say, uh, from the first moment I laid eyes on you, I knowed you was meant for me. Oh, uh, uh Pop, uh, the grammar's all wrong. Where? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, correct it like this. From the first moment I lied eyes on you, I know you was meant for me. <laughs> Oh, no, no, Pop. Well, okay, you fix up the grammar any way you want. Now, now say, uh, I cannot offer you money like others, but money isn't everything. Marilyn won't go for that. Oh, sure she will. She's too young to know any better. <laughs> now, finish it up and say, I can only offer you a loving heart. Make me the happiest boy in the world. Yours truly, your love slave. You got that? Oh, yeah, but... but Fine, I'll uh, take it over is... to Marilyn Morris's house and slip it under her door. Well, can I mail it? No, you don't send this kind of a letter through the mail. You deliver it in person. It's more romantic that way. Oh, no, Pop, I can't. Listen, Junior, if you want to get anywhere with women, you mustn't be shy. Now, when I made up my mind to marry your mother, was I shy? No. I went right up to her house, walked into the parlor, turned the lights down low, put my arms around her and whispered, Darling, lend me two dollars for a marriage license. <laughs> There's Marilyn's house. Yeah, well, well, go on, ring the bell. Oh, Pop, I, I can't, honestly. All right, then, I'll ring. I never saw such a kid. You've got to learn not to be so scared of... Uh, oh, here's somebody coming. Oh, Pop, Pop, I'm going. Here, you give her the letter. Junior, Junior, come back here. Junior! Yes? Uh... Oh, hello, Mr. Riley. Oh, hello, Mrs. Morris. I, I just came over to deliver this here letter. A letter? Yeah. To my own peachy pie. Peachy pie? Mr. Riley, what's the meaning of this? Well, I... Oh, 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 oh you, you think that I... That you... No, you see, this here letter is, is for... the door, Adelaide? Uh, oh, hello, Riley. Hello, what brings you here? Well, I... I uh, uh, what's this letter? Uh, peachy pie... Riley! Oh, well, I, I was... Uh, Junior, wait for me! Riley, come back here! He must be out of his mind writing me a letter like this. Dearest Peachy Pie, from the first moment I laid eyes on you, I knew you were meant for me. Oh. Mother! Just a minute, Marilyn. I cannot offer Mother, you... Mother, what on earth are you doing with my mail? It, your mail? Yes, that's Junior's handwriting. Now, please give it to me. <laughs> here, dear. You're welcome to it. Everybody's always opening my mail. <sighs> That's a relief. For one dreadful minute there, I thought he... <laughs> <laughs> I can't run anymore, but I gotta. He may come after me. He's got a car. Out of my way, kid. Hey, Pop, wait. It's me. Junior. So, so here you are. You coward, running away. Well, but, Pop... Don't talk. Let's keep running. <laughs> Pop. Hey, Pop, what are you running for? On account of you. You got me in a jam. You and your love letters. But you told me to write it. You told me to write it. Just because I told you, do you have to do it? Haven't you got a mind of your own? If I told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? No. I'm your father and you'll obey me. <laughs> Boy, 12 years old, writing love letters. When I was 12 years old, I didn't waste my time writing love letters. I was writing the ABCs. <laughs> what do you think of as girls? Well, I'm ordering you to have nothing to do with girls until you're married. 
<laughs> yeah, but, Pat, if I don't go with girls, how'll I get married? That's your problem. Keep running. <laughs> But, Pa, I don't want to hear no excuses. You stay away from women. I'm telling you this for your own good. Women are the root of all evil. And you're too young to go around pulling up roots. Keep running. (laughs) Prell will bring you the second act of The Life of Riley in a moment. There's radiance for you in your first Prell shampoo. Yes, there's radiance for you in your first Prell shampoo. Procter & Gamble's Radiant Cream Shampoo in the handy tube. The very first time you use Prell, you'll thrill to the glamorous radiance of your hair. Because Prell leaves hair more radiant than any soap, shampoo, cream, or liquid. It can't leave a dulling soap film. Prell uncovers all the true brilliance of your hair. Brings out those beautiful, natural highlights. Prell washed hair curls better, too. It's easier to set and manage. There's no worry of embarrassing dandruff, either. Because Prell removes such dandruff in as little as three minutes. Leaves hair and scalp clean, delightfully fragrant. Try Prell, your very next shampoo, and see the difference for yourself. Ask for it at your favorite shampoo counter. Ask for Prell, the radiant cream shampoo. P-R-E-L-O, Prell shampoo. Try Prell tomorrow. And now back to the life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley, who imagines, as usual, that he is in desperate trouble. Uh, Pop. Who's that? What's only me, Pop? Oh, you scared me. What's the matter? You still worrying about that letter? Oh, I'm in big trouble, son. I should never have run away like that. Junior, your father is a big dope. Oh, no, you're not, Pop. I think you're pretty smart. Now, you just think I'm smart because you're a dope like your father. <laughs> you, you gotta help me, Junior. Well, sure, Pop. Oh, well, now, 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 go over to the Morris's house and explain about that letter. Oh, huh? no, no, I can't do that, but you've Pop. you've got it, Junior. Well, I can't. I had a fight with Marilyn today, and I told her off. I- I'm through with her. I'm not going to her house. But, Junior, you don't understand the jam I'm in. Mrs. Morris thinks I wrote that letter, and she thinks I'm in love with her. Now, she'll fall in love with me. No, she's got more sense. <laughs> uh, that's what they said about your mother, and look what happened to her. Now, you've got to explain to Mrs. Morris. If, 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 Why don't you go? Well, su- suppose her husband is there. Well, then you'll explain to him. You're not afraid of him, are you? Me? Afraid? <laughs> but suppose he won't listen. Make him listen. Well, you start a fight. Then you'll fight him. But I'm a coward. Ha <laughs> ha, I got you there. <laughs> Oh, no, you've got to go, Junior. Us men have got to stick together. You, you're just like me, son. We're cut from the same mold. You're just as moldy as I am. <laughs> you've got to help each other. Will you go? No, Pop, I'm just like you. I'm a coward, too. <laughs> what a revolting development this is. <laughs> Riley, then what happened? But I ran away, Gillis. You ran? Yeah. Don't. Now they'll think you really wrote that love note. But I... Riley, maybe you did write it after all. Oh, no, honest. I told you, Junior... Riley, you can trust me. I'm your friend. I understand how these things happen. I'm a man of the world. A man sees a woman... Gillis, you gotta believe me. I'm loyal to my wife. As far as other women are concerned, I'm just like you. Now I know you're guilty. <laughs> Gillis, I swear to you. All the swearing in the world ain't gonna help you when Morris comes after you. Morris? With a gun. No, he, he wouldn't do that. Oh, no? What would you do if some low sneak wrote love letters to your wife, tried to steal her away from you, break up your home? What would you do? I'd kill the rat with my bare hands, and he'd deserve it. Any guy who. Would... Wait a minute, no fair. I'm the rat. <laughs> yeah, and Morris knows it. He comes after you with the gun. It's against the law. Not the unwritten law. He aims the gun at you. <laughs> you jump him. There's a struggle. A shot rings out. I'm killed. My troubles are over. <laughs> no, Morris is killed. Uh-oh. Your troubles are just beginning. There you are in your living room with a body. you got to hide it. In the closet. No. My garage. If they find it, you'll, they'll suspect you. Your garage. That's good. Now I'm safe. You think so? <laughs> Some rat squeals to the cops. Who? Me. <laughs> I don't want no bodies cluttering up my garage. The homicide squad comes. They take you to headquarters. They grill you. 
Till you confess. I won't confess. They make you confess. I won't. They shine a light in your eyes. You're sweating. It's hot. They don't give you nothing to drink. You're dying of thirst. Now will you confess? Water. Water. Confess. No. You've done it. No. You loved it, so you killed it. No. You shot it. All right, I shot him. I done it. Turn the light off. I confess. I confess. <laughs> Riley, you're going to find for this. <laughs> Oh, uh, Adelaide. What is it, Hobart? Uh, tell, have you decided about the car? Oh, yes, dear. We don't really need two cars, so I think you ought to sell the old one. Only... Only what? Must we sell it to Riley? There are enough maniacs driving around the streets of Los Angeles as it is. Mm. Oh, Riley's not so bad. I promised I'd give him first crack at it. I'll give him a call right now. How much are you going to ask? Well, she's old, but she's in pretty good shape. I figure we ought to get a couple of hundred for her. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Riley. Uh, say, is Riley there? Oh. Oh, Riley, I'm glad you're home. There was a phone call for you. Phone call for me? Who, who, who was it? Who was it? Oh, well, now, don't get excited. It was only Mr. Morris. Oh, Morris. For a minute, I thought it might be... Morris! Riley, come out of that closet. What are you doing in the closet? But I, I, I'm looking for my gray pants. You're wearing them. I can never find anything in this house. Oh. What's the matter with you? Never mind me. What did Morris say? Well, he's coming over to see you. When? Now. What for? Did he say what for? Well, he wouldn't tell me. He, he acted very mysterious. He said it was a private matter. Oh. And you'd know why. Oh, I know. Oh, what's wrong? Nothing, nothing, Peg. Just remember, no matter what happens, I love you to the end. What? Riley, will you do me a favor and lie down for a while? I'll talk to you when you make sense. But, Peg, listen, will you? I, I haven't got time for your nonsense. i got to get supper ready. Uh, she's right. I'd better lie down. I don't feel so good. Oh, what a mess. He'll be here any minute. That's him. He's here. All right, let him come. Okay, come and get me. I'm ready. You're lying down, but you don't look ready to me. <laughs> oh, it's you, Digger. No nicknames, please. It's Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> Well, what brings you here, Diggerby? Oh, just a social call. I took the night off. Business is slow. I've got lots of things on the shelf, but they're not moving. <laughs> well, you may have a new customer soon. Any minute now, a guy's coming here to give me the business. And if he gives me the business, I'll give you the business. <laughs> really? Digger, put away that tape measure. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm just an eager beaver. What's the trouble, Riley? Well, it all started on account of James Mason. Who? James Mason, the English actor. You know, top hole. Top hole? Uh, no. Bottom hole. Yes. <laughs> but actually, it's more my junior's fault. Ah, yes. Children can be aggravating. Yesterday, a gang of hoodlums sneaked into my business establishment and plastered signs all over my boxes. Oh, I was furious. But why? What did the signs say? Do not open until Christmas. <laughs> Uh, I'm in worse trouble. There's a guy who thinks I'm in love with his wife, and he's coming after me, maybe with a gun. Oh, dear me, you must avoid this man. You've got to find a hideaway and lie low, and I'll help you. No, he'll come after me and find me. <laughs> Not where I'll put you. That's uh, too late. He's here. Oh, quick, the back way. No, I ain't no coward. Frankly, I am. Uh, well, cheerio. I'd better be shoveling off. <laughs> All right, I'm coming. Oh, hello, Riley. I phoned Morris, before. I know why you're here, but let's talk it over first. Let's be reasonable. Of course, I'm not going to hold a gun on you. Well, well, that's a relief. Yes, I talked the whole thing over with my wife. You did? And you can have her. <laughs> You're giving her to me? Well, for three hundred dollars. Three hundred? Well, I don't think that's asking too much. I've had her a long time, but I took good care of her. 
Of course, anything that's been in the family that long takes a beating. <laughs> and especially with four kids. But all she really needs is a good paint job. <laughs> Why, the body's in good shape. You've seen it. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't look that close. <laughs> Now, look, Riley, I'm not saying she's perfect. Well, on a cold night, she's liable to start wheezing. <laughs> so I just choke her a little, and she stops. <laughs> you freak! <laughs> you monster! Oh, wait a minute, Riley. I don't like your attitude. I'm not trying to palm off a total wreck on you. <laughs> Ah, you can get plenty of use out of her. You thief! Peg! Peg, come here, quick! Are you out of your mind, Riley? What's the matter, Riley? Take a good look at this fiend. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to sell me his wife. Under the table yet. What? Why, he's mad. He's absolutely mad. Don't try to deny it, Morris. I heard you. I was playing along with you to see how far you'd go. Riley, you big idiot. I... You ain't human, Morris. I would never try to get rid of my peg, even if she could use a new paint job. Riley. Why, for Pete's sake, Riley, will you When listen? she starts wheezing on a cold night, I don't choke her. I give her nose drops. Oh. <laughs> will you shut up a minute and listen to me? I came here to sell you my car. My car! Your car? You mean the, the note, Peachy Pie, James Mason, your wife, the old wreck, choke? Why, the whole thing is as clear as day. Hey. Peg, Mrs. Morris, don't want me. I'm still all yours. What a revolting development this is. The Riley's will return in just a moment. At the first sign of unsightly dandruff, it's time to use Prell, Procter & Gamble's radiant cream shampoo in the handy tube. For in addition to leaving hair radiantly lovely, Prell leaves hair radiantly clean, too, free of embarrassing dandruff. Yes, in as little as three minutes, Prell removes ugly dandruff flakes. Doctors' examinations proved it. In most cases, even stubborn dandruff was controlled by only two Prell shampoos a week. Using Prell's a pleasure, too, because of that handy tube. No waste, no spills. Try it the very next time you shampoo. For hair that's radiantly lovely, free of unsightly dandruff, get Prell. P-R-E-L-L, Prell Shampoo Leaves hair radiant, gleaming bright Not a bit of dandruff is in sight Comes in a tube, handy too P-R-E-L-L, Prell Shampoo Good night, folks. Roger and Gamble invite you to join us again next week to hear The Life of Riley with William Bendix as Riley. The script is by Reuben Ship, Alan Lipscott, and Dick Powell. This is Riley as uh, Paula Winslow. Digger O'Dell is John Brown. The Life of Riley is produced by Irving Brecker. And remember, for more radiant hair, free of unsightly dandruff, get the shampoo in the tube. P-R-E-L-L. Prell Shampoo. My new nylons are so sheer, I'm really afraid to wash them. You mean you don't know they're safe in snow? Yes, safe in... <laughs> Wonderful ivory snow. Yes, lovely stockings stay lovely longer with ivory snow care. Its ivory mildness helps safeguard stocking glamour, reduces stocking runs. Ivory snow is speedy, too, gives instant suds even in cool water. It's the only soap, both ivory mild and granulated for efficiency. There's no other soap like it. Ivory Snow is wonderful for all nice washables. Your hands will tell you why. Wash dishes with Ivory Snow as millions do. See how it pampers your hands. Then you'll know why lovely washables can stay lovely longer with... Wonderful Ivory Snow. This is Ken Niles reminding you to listen again next Friday when Procter & Gamble brings you a full hour of entertainment. First, Red Skelton, and then, The Life of Riley. Good night. Good night.
This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. David's Bridal, where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. We let our friends pick out what we wear, show off our dance moves, obsess over every little detail, hold your hand through it all, smile bravely when it's time to let go, make your dreams come true. The things we do for love. Only at David's Bridal. 